Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a short overview of the pediatric pancreatitis uh, data from the Hungarian Pancreatic Study Group database. Um, so at the moment we have uh, 42 patients uh, from uh, 11 centers. You can see here in this map uh, what the centers and uh, from uh, adults, we know that uh, the etiological factor is mainly the alcohol and uh, the, um, the biliary causes, but we uh, can see the, uh, uh, the idiopathic uh, etiology in 10% in adult uh, pan pancreatitis uh, cases. And uh, we know from the literature that we can count uh, less than 10% uh, of the genetic risk factors for uh, adults. And we have the EIPD guideline, and it says that the genetic test, uh, testing should be performed after, after the second attack of idiopathic acute pancreatitis for adults. What, what the situation for, for children? The etiology is more colorful, and uh, we have to count uh, uh, with uh, 23 percentage of the idiopathic cases. And based on uh, the Danish study group uh, results, the genetic risk for those uh, children uh, with idiopathic pancreatitis, the genetic risk is more than uh, uh, 37 percentage. But at the moment, we have no guidelines for, for the genetic testing when and how we should perform it. <coughs> So in the Hungarian cohort, we have uh, 42 patients, as I mentioned, uh, and it's uh, 24 acute pancreatitis patients, nine of acute recur recurrent uh, pancreatitis, and uh, nine as uh, chronic panc they are uh, chronic pancreatitis patients. And uh, the etiology, uh, as um, we, we can see that uh, uh, in our registry, it's uh, around 60 percentage of the idiopathic pancreatitis patient, uh, which is a uh, mean uh, 25 children. And uh, we did the genetic analysis for, uh, for um, uh, 15 of this uh, 25, and uh, we can found that uh, the three negative results, and uh, we have uh, three patients with PRSS1 mutation, which uh, we are know it is a causative mutation for uh, pancreatitis, and we can see these other mutations, which are risk factors for the pancreatitis. So uh, based on the uh, genetic results, we can say that we have uh, three patients with hereditary pancreatitis. We have 12 uh, idiopathic pancreatitis patients with genetic background. And unfortunately, at the moment, we have 10 patients uh, who hasn't uh, been examined yet. But uh, mm, I'm so happy because I, I can uh, tell you that uh, Balázs Német, uh, he is uh, try to organize the system for the genetic testing and uh, hopefully it will be available soon in Saged and we can perform that as soon as it uh, can. So here, here are the, the mutation which was found and uh, the following conclusion can be done that based on the genetic results of uh, these 15 patients suffering from idiopathic pancreatitis, pancreatitis-inducing mutation were found in three cases, whereas genetic risk factors were identified in 20, uh, the 12 cases. The genetic testing of these patients were performed when the disease became recurrent or chronic. So the question is still open, when should the genetic testing be performed in children with idiopathic pancreatitis? So we need more patients, we need more data, we need pers perspective collection, so we need the APPLE study. So I would like to uh, catch the opportunity to invite you to the uh, second part of this session. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. The paper is open for discussion. Any questions from the floor? Yes, there is one, please. Uh, about the guidelines, the first one, because probably in the next year there will be the guidelines, SPECAN guidelines, European Gastronomy Pathology and Pathology 
society. Uh, yeah. The, the high responsible for this uh, for his guidelines. I'm in this group, and the guidelines will be prepared. And uh, what about the uh, genetic testing? Uh, in my knowledge, now uh, there are the guidelines uh, from the European Pancreatic Club published in 2003 about the genetic testing, and there are the children in these guidelines too. Yes, and uh, that's why that we have the guidelines as, as when, when we have to. That in your idiopathic, you have to check the gene mutations. As I told uh, before, yes, uh, but uh, it uh, as I know, but. Maybe it's, it's not correct. Uh, it just says uh, almost the same that uh, in, after the second attack, if it's uh, idiopathic, but it's not uh, divided, the, so it's not specifying uh, as, as we need it, I think. Or I don't know what, what's your uh, opinion about this. So do you think uh, the, the UK guideline is, is okay for us and, and it's... European Pancreatic Club guidelines are for the adults and for the children too. Is the first one. If they are good, okay. We, we have to think about uh, in our center. We decide to to, to, uh, to uh, check mm? the genes uh, when the patients have more than two. Have the chronic pancreatitis, of course, or acute recurrent more than two. We started from three pancreatitis, mm. and with the patients, the family, uh, family. I think in Hungary we, we also try to do this system, but uh, the first problem was that we don't really have uh, the opportunity to do the genetic testing. So uh, every uh, of the pediatrician who are who were interested in uh, that field, they have to organize it by themselves to 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 do the genetic testing. So uh, each of uh, the pediatricians sent the samples to Miklos to Boston, and uh, it, it was a really complicated way and. Uh, uh, and there was no system in Hungary and there it, it was not in, in the everyday knowledge that you have to do the genetic testing and when you have to do it. And uh, uh, maybe, yes, okay, it's, it uh, seems, it to, seems to, seems to, yes. Now we got three or four centers when we can perform the gene mutations. That's why it's easier to us to just to send, send the blood, it's, it's much easier. It's, it, it's nice that I, I hope that, that the guidelines will be published next year, there will be governments for it. Yes, and it will be nice and then there will be a system and uh, yes, and, and we, which one can be used and then we test it's okay or not and we, we can we can go on. Any other question? Uh, can I ask what was the uh, distribution between the severe uh, cases and mild cases? Is it similar to the adult population or is it different in children? Uh, as I see, in about this, uh, based on these data, uh, um, we can uh, see less uh, severe patients. So I, I think the, the mild and, uh, and moderate are m much more, so the cases are from these groups can occur much often than the severe group. But Thank you very much. Yes, can I just please? comment on your question? What we struggle with is how are we going to define severe pancreatitis in pediatrics? And that's still a struggle. And there was a nice editorial done by Dr. Uch and JPGN about if we start with a definition, probably we'll be speaking the same language. So when I wanted to define the severe pancreatitis in our patient population to derive the prognostic model, the most struggle was to find a consistent way that would be acceptable for everybody. We didn't want just death and multi-organ failure because we think that there are other things that make a patient uh, demonstrating a severe attack rather than just um, dying or having multi-organ failure. Um, and that then, you know, the comments were from the audience, which I appreciate. How do you count the pseudosis um, as a severe? Well, if it's an attack and this patient developed a pseudosis and that's why they ended up in the hospital for two months, that's different than a patient who got in and ate and left in two days. And that's how we start by a definition. So if we all speak one language and come up with, let's accept a definition of severe pancreatitis, it might be something that we need to do a collaborative work and just make a 
consensus paper, whether it comes from this meeting or, any, or maybe a pancreas past meeting, and just say, let's sit together and say, what is the most acceptable way to define severe pancreatitis in kids based on Atlanta criteria and then tweak something to pediatrics? Okay. Thank you very much. Yes? Um, the, the other option is just to collect all the features and let the data help guide you rather than coming up with your definition and trying to fit the data into it. So this is a chance just to collect a lot of information about organ failure, to, uh, time to be feeding, those kinds of things that are uh, probably a little bit stronger uh, data, and then use that to sort it out and see where the... So hopefully the Apple study will, will uh, help us to to do a good COAT score and system for it.